Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the April 5th, 2021 work session of the Salisbury City Council. We have a, a not too long agenda tonight, but before we get into that, uh, we are going to uh, enter into a closed session uh, for a short time. Uh, I'll call for a motion now to convene in closed session to consult with council to obtain legal advice on a legal mad matter in accordance with the Annotated Code of Maryland 3-305B7. So moved. Second. Mr. Boda made the motion. Ms. Jackson seconded. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Mr. Boda? Aye. Ms. Jackson? Aye. Ms. Blake? Aye. Mrs. Gregory? Aye. And the chair votes aye. We, we are going into closed session with a vote of five to zero. Thank you, everyone. Welcome back. Uh, the council has just come out of closed session to get advice on a legal matter regarding pending le legislation. We will now continue with our um, agenda. And first up, we have an update, Chesapeake Utilities Corporation, uh, Somerset Natural Gas Project update and um, infrastructure and development director, Amanda Pollack will do the honors. Good evening, Amanda, thank you. Hi, good afternoon. So in your packages is your monthly update from Chesapeake Utilities that details what work they've completed in the past month and what they will be doing in the next month as far as the pipeline installation. And you can probably see as you drive down Route 13, a lot of their uh, pipe that's laid out in staging where they're uh, working on installation right now. So they are still working through installation at the time of their update. They were about 39% complete on the work that's being done in Salisbury, and they will be completing that work this week. They have been working with Will on coordination with the rail trail. And additionally, we are meeting with them about tree planting for remediation sites for where they remove trees within the city. And we actually have a meeting on Thursday at Lake Street Playground this week to look at um, some potential tree planting areas. So if you have any questions, I'd be happy to uh, send them to Chesapeake and get a response for you. Great, uh, I do have a couple. Mir, do you have anything? Mir had a step away, he said. Yes. Oh, okay. All right, April? Um. I have no questions about that, but you say you're having a meeting or you're at the Lake Street Playground? And what day is that? So that's this Thursday. So Chesapeake has to do some tree planting to remediate trees where they took them out in the railroad right of way uh, near Evo. And so that was one area that we were looking at as a potential site to plant some trees is in the playground area, not in their ball fields, but um, you know, so it could provide shade for people who are who are there watching their kids at the playground. So that's that's one site in particular we're meeting with um, field operations staff and Chesapeake Utilities staff to look at that. And what time will that be? That is, give me one second. That is at 10 o'clock on Thursday. And this is just a preliminary meeting to um, to look at the, the area. So they have not submitted a plan for us yet. Just interrupt. I have no Angela? Idea. I have no questions. Uh, Michelle? No questions right now. Excuse me. <coughs> April, do you have one more question? I think I interrupted you. I apologize. No, you're fine. No, I had, I just want to know about the meeting at the Lake Street okay. Playground and everything else. I have no questions about now. Okay. A uh, couple, couple of issues. Uh, they, they still have the agreement with us that they're going to help us with the rail trail in terms of landscaping? Some landscaping they said they were gonna help us with? Yes, yes, potentially. We don't have any details of that yet. Okay. And the other thing, I, I thought I, I hope I misunderstood. Well, I hope I didn't misunderstand, but it says here 
that their open trench pipeline installation. When we had our first meeting, did they not talk about using? Um, yeah, down something a, underground. Underground, uh, so that, that we wouldn't be doing trenching. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so in a lot of places, especially when they're installing lines in most of our streets, they will um, directionally drill or bore the lines in. I have noticed by the way they're setting up in some places, they are open cutting. And I think a lot of that probably depends on what the surface is. When it's not a paved surface, it's going to be cheaper for them to open cut versus directionally drill. But I can certainly ask them why they're using that in different places. Yeah, I wish you would because sure. I, I understand that it's cheaper. I, I, you know, I can remember that much from school. But the things that the, the thing that I don't like is when people tell us they're going to do one thing something and else. then they do something else. Sure. Yes. Uh, so it's just a point of clarification. I want to make sure that they understand that we're watching this, mm -hmm. you know, and, and the rest of it I have no, no trouble with. Uh, and I've watched some of the, um, the welding and stuff that's going on, and they're moving quickly. I hope they're not moving too quickly, but they're moving quickly, and everything else seems to be in order. But I just wanted to get it. And if you could ask them, I'd appreciate it. Absolutely. Yes, I will. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, uh, next up, we have a um, discussion uh, on fortune telling, fortune telling license fees. Ms. Glantz, go ahead, try this one. <laughs> Well, good evening, Council. Uh, I believe uh, Mich uh, uh, Councilwoman Gregory uh, asked for this to be added to the, the Council packet, but I will just add that uh, we all received um, information and some research from Casey Martin last week regarding other um, sections of code from around the state um, with that have uh, fortune telling fees, some that don't. Um, so we are looking at uh that research and and trying to figure out where we should land exactly uh, i was on the phone with uh, chief duncan earlier today uh, and we are both on the on the same page that this needs to be uh reassessed and um streamlined and brought into the 21st century uh and make sure that a fee is uh appropriate for um the the, the time and place and um there are some some things that are really out of date and um you know Un, uh, insensitive um, these days uh, with language and things like that that needs to be amended. Um, so, you know, we're going to look at, you know, background checks. Um, we don't need to have a meeting with the, the chief of police. A background check will suffice in that regard. Um, and I think a nominal and appropriate fee is the direction that we're, we're pointing um, this towards, um, if that sounds like a, a good plan here. Okay. Mir, questions? Um, no, I, I agree with what uh, Julia has said. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, I, you know, I, I think it's the, that fee is outrageous. I think uh, we should bring it in line with other businesses and whatever, you know, we normally charge someone to open up a, a, a business that that should be so if it's $25, $50 for a business license, plus the, the background thing, uh, I'm fine with that. Or even making the fee zero. I'm okay with that too. Okay. April? Um, I have no questions. I do agree with Julia as far as um, background checks and things. Angela? Well, the only question I have is, is when this came up, um, I inadvertently i think it's been there for a while but it just the sign popped out at the end of uh it's on the corner of mount herman and um Beagle. yeah <laughs> so I, I i never really like connected it or or uh, whatever and then i thought to myself what or if anything did they do i mean is it comparable or did they do nothing or is it or because if we're asking this one lady, whatever it is, whatever the fee is, did the other did the other person on Beagle and Mount Herman do what they were supposed to do to, to make it 
fair because that is right in the city. Correct. Angela, that property is in the county. It's not, a, they're not a city resident. That side of the street is county. Yeah. Okay. So that, I mean, uh, Casey did go to the county council as well, and hopefully they will uh, bring their fee in line uh, with reality <laughs> and then 2021, like we will. I see. Okay. I mean, that was all I had to say. Okay. Michelle? Yeah, I really appreciate you guys taking a look at this. I mean, when Casey brought it to me and I saw a thousand dollars for this, a thousand dollars for that. And I just like, there's just, that's completely unreasonable, especially when I opened my childcare, it was a $50 fee to, you know, have the water checked, make sure I had running water and that sort of thing to get my, my business going. So for something like that to cost that much money, I understand you know, times were different back then. But if you look at the times back then, a thousand dollars was a heck of a lot more money. You know, so so you think about it; it's just, it was just exponentially a larger amount back then. So it just makes it all the more egregious when you look at it now, and you're like, "Wow, that's a lot of money now." But um, so I really appreciate you guys taking a look at this and and fixing this because there are folks who I know you know, I want to be able to provide these kind of services and th this sort of fee just completely knocks them out of the market. So I really appreciate it. Thank you, Michelle. Yeah, I, th I think that, uh, I think you're right in one, one way. Uh, this was sort of a deterrent uh, to get that type of business around. And I think we've, we've come way beyond that now. Um, and look at, <laughs> Looking at some of the fees, I went down the fee list and it's bizarre. I mean, this is like, this is another whole universe. So um, yeah, if you if you uh, come up with a recommendation and uh, put it together, uh, we'll look at it and then uh, move forward. Yeah, uh, we'll prepare that over the coming couple of weeks um, since it's a whole rehaul of the whole process, not just a fee um, change that we could just stick in the budget at this point. So uh, we'll bring that back um, at the end of April or beginning of May. Would this be a, an appropriate time to look at the other fees or have we done that recently? We, we do that. Yeah, we do that every year with the budget. Um, so I don't, I don't think there are any other weird ones like this, but uh, we I can, didn't see any looking down the list, but yeah. we can work with, with, uh, with that perspective in mind. Gotcha. Okay. Hey, Julia, can we can just do this in the budget, right? Well, we can, but since we're going to change the the process is is antiquated as well. Um, that needs to be updated. Um, it, it requires a meeting with the chief, and and she has to approve and a letter from your doctor. Um, they they really didn't want this to happen. Um, and there's language around. Yeah, the wording. Yeah, They're like spiritual it's allowed. Yeah, uh, versus yeah. religion and it all needs yeah. to be redone. So um, I'd like to do well, it. That, yeah, that's almost a First Amendment violation because what fees do we charge a church to open up? Right. I mean, this to me falls under religious liberty thing. So I, I would approach it from that perspective. What do we do with the new church? So right. that's just my my perspective, my libertarian perspective. Sorry. <laughs> no problem here. <laughs> okay. All right. That'll, that'll, uh, so next on the next, whenever it's ready, Julia will put that on and uh, we'll get with Kim and just get it on the agenda. Thank you. Next, um, you want to introduce this, Julia? Or do you want me to introduce it? It's up to you. No, I'm happy to do it. Um, so council before uh, you this next topic, um, obviously, you know, um, overall, generally speaking, things are looking up uh, in regards to COVID. The governor has rescinded many of the um, emergency protections that were put in place. Um, and uh, Matt Drew's got his uh, vaccine sticker, make sure everybody else gets their vaccines. Um, so we are, are trying to stay in um, lockstep with, with where health parameters should be. 
um, and not keeping restrictions around longer than they are necessary. So if you recall back to May, I think of last year, uh, the mayor brought before you a piece of legislation that would limit the amount of um, fee increases that a landlord could impose on their tenant uh, in the state of emergency. Uh, we are still in a state of emergency, um, but again, you know, things, things are looking up. Um, and we don't want to leave any um, undue burdens on the landlord community at the moment. Um, so we'd like to, um, you know, feel you out and uh, get your gauge on whether we're willing to uh, remove that freeze that is currently in place moving forward um, and have legislation drafted um, for a future meeting. Thank you. Um, comments from the uh, council, Mr. Boda. Uh, Julie, I concur with you. I think it's it's time we uh, maybe draft something and and begin the process of rescinding this. Uh, like you said, it's uh, you know a lot of people uh, have have been received their back pay from their unemployment for those that, and then we also had the uh, grants available for people to help pay their rent. So uh, I think there's been enough assistance out there over the past year to help people get caught up. So, uh, so hopefully uh, that's happened with most everybody. And uh, I think, I think it's time we pull this one back. Thank you, Mayor. Ms. Jackson. You're on mute. Oops, so I you agree with Julia and Mayor. I mean, it's time to get the ball rolling. Thank you, April. Come on. Ms. Blake? I concur. I, I, I feel the same way. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. Ms. Gregory? I think at the time the legislation was, you know, incredibly important, but like you said, I mean, we've gotten, we're, we're moving forward and it's time to take a look at it again. So, yeah. Thank, thank you, Michelle. I concur with the rest of the council. Um, I think we took a, an aggressive approach when it was necessary. And I think the time has come for us to, to uh, look at rescinding this and getting back to some reasonable, uh, reasonable situation. And I agree with Mir's comments, especially about the assistance that's been given and, uh, the, and Julia's comment relative to uh, we hope that things can keep going the way they are and getting better and better. Um, so I, I too concur with that. And uh, I would ask uh, the acting mayor to please uh, develop a piece of legislation and then uh, get it to the council and we'll schedule it for, um, for a work session. And then we'll have a discussion on it. So thank you. Mrs. Nichols, will you take care of that please? Okay. Uh, that takes care of the agenda items that were uh, presented. Um, we're now into remarks for the good of the order. Um, any uh, comments from the audience? Uh, I don't see any. We've got Matt. I've got oh, is one, that one just, uh, just uh, commentary. Yeah, th thanks for recognizing me. Um, I'm, I, I love the, uh, the update that Amanda gave with regard to uh, the work with Chesapeake Utilities and their cooperation with Will and the, and the, the, the bike trail planning. Uh, I know that there was some, uh, some aspirations at the start that uh, there may be some assistance that Chesapeake can give with regard to right-of-way access. So I, I'd ask that we continue to ask about that uh, as, as you're moving forward. Uh, that's been one of the, the big impediments to getting the preferred trail alignment with the rail trail project, as, as everybody's aware. So the more we can, uh, the more we can sing, sing from the same song sheet and, and have Chesapeake sing from that sheet, uh, I think the better it is for everybody. So, uh, but uh, glad, to, glad to hear that things are going uh, in a much better direction now. Thank you, Matt. Appreciate it. Anyone else? No one else. Uh, Ms. Glantz? 
Well, I just want to report that we had a tremendous weekend this weekend. Uh, 2,000 runners uh, came through Salisbury and uh, we went off without a hitch. Everybody was uh, safe and distanced. And we had a, a ton of folks qualify for uh, Boston, um, underscoring how fast and smooth our race is. So hopefully that will um, uh, keep us at the top of um, you know, serious runners lists in future years. So thanks to uh, Jason Chance and all of our uh, local agencies that helped uh, put that on without, without any issue. So um, gives us confidence moving forward um, as we start to bring back other events as well. Um, and then I just wanted to add, uh, while we're talking about rental assistance, there is a new pot of money coming down from the state that will have uh, far fewer restrictions around uh, and, and hoops that the tenant has to jump through uh, for rental assistance and utility assistance. Um, that's coming through to the county, uh, but everybody will be able to apply for that. Um, I also believe that landlords will be able to apply on behalf of their tenant, which is really great and hasn't mm -hmm. been the case in the past. Um, so it's been really odd. Some, some pots of money have had really loose restrictions. Some have had a really um, strong restrictions, which doesn't bode well in um, this time. So uh, really thinking that this will um, plug some gaps and uh, save some folks from uh, some dire straits here. So we're going to assist as, uh, as best we can and get that out to the community. And then the final thing I wanted to add uh, was that the Mass Vaccination Center um, still has tons of appointments. Um, there's, I think, a, a lot of vaccine opportunity in Salisbury. They've got the walk-up line, um, and we're, I think they will, will take almost anybody um, if, if you just show up. So show up and get your vaccine. Thank you, Julia. Appreciate it. Here. Um, so I got my first vaccine the other week. I get my second one next week uh, in uh, I can confirm that if you uh, drink two beers after it, there are no side effects. Uh, so just wanted to share that uh, with everybody. Um, hey, just uh, keep supporting our local businesses, uh, get vaccinated, uh, make sure make sure you follow the protocols for it. So if you've had COVID and you get your first vaccination, they like you to wait 90 days before your second one. I know a couple of people who didn't and they, had, and they suffered some severe or actions because they didn't follow the guidelines. So make sure, make sure everybody follows the guidelines. And uh, I look forward to seeing everybody soon. Thank you, Mayor. Appreciate it. Ms. Jackson? Um, basically, I concur with Mayor as far as the vaccinations. And I heard also that Merlin is one of the state, state of Maryland is one of the top um, states for giving vaccinations. So. Um, Merlin, keep doing what you're doing, um, people, residents, citizens, whatever, continue to get your vaccinations, um, continue to social distance, wear your mask, and continue to sanitize, and be blessed. Thank you, April. Ms. Blake? Well, I am diligently waiting for the Johnson & Johnson shot. Um, I've been on the call after call after call. Um, so I'm, I'm waiting, but that, that may be a little longer than I anticipated. Um, so, but just, I'm not giving up. So anybody um, who feels frustrated with, with the shot process, just keep at it and just keep working it. And eventually you will get um, your vac vaccination. Um, of course, and, and as always, if you are healthy enough, please give um, the gift of life, donate that blood. Um, we are always in need for blood here in, in, on the Eastern Shore, and all you need to do is call, make an appointment. Thank you, Angela. Michelle? I just want to remind folks, it's Autism Acceptance Month, so, um, you know, do your research before donating to autism-related groups, please, please, please. There are some that are better than others. Me personally, I like the Autism uh, Self-Advocacy Network, but there are a lot of good ones. So, um, and just please keep wearing your masks and vaccinate as early as you can, as soon as you can. Thank you, Michelle. Yes, I concur as always with uh, Angela about the blood donation. Um, 
Also, I, I think we talk about the progress we've made. Um, my wife and I have gone out since we're now both totally vote vaccinated. We went out uh, three times for dinner in the last two weeks um, and we had to wait each time, nice. which is a very good sign. I, you know, and people are now starting to really support the local restaurants and that's excellent. And we thank you for, for supporting them. For those of you who haven't been vaccinated, uh, they still, the food still is good if you take it out. So uh, please do that and don't forget uh, that we're not out of this yet. As April always says, we're not there yet. So wear your mask. Um, and thank you all for attending. Colin, thank you for being on again. You're, you're, you're a constant fixture here. And uh, thank you, uh, Michael Sullivan. I don't can't see who's who's sitting back there. Ashley. You need, Ashley. Up, you need okay. to upgrade your uh, toys in your waiting room, though. <laughs> I, I didn't have anything to do while I was out there. <laughs> well, thank you. And it's good to have you guys there. Uh, with that, uh, we are adjourned, and we'll see you next Monday night. Thank, thank you, you for the email, Kim. Thank you. Thank you. Take care.